Is anyone else sweating? Now, I know I'm not the only one with an anxiety-inducing amount of student loan debt. And I'm guessing you maybe clicked on this video because you're one of those other lucky individuals as well. Before I dive in, I feel like it is important to say that I know some student loan lenders have been a bit predatory in the past, but I take full responsibility for every single time I signed on the line of every one of my promissory notes for all of my student loans, even though I had no idea how that would impact my future for the next decades. Today's video is an update to my debt journey video that I posted about a year ago, and it is by far my most popular video, probably for similar reasons that you just clicked on this one. But since it's been a year now, it feels appropriate to give an update as to where things are at now. And for being honest, my editing in that video was pretty horrendous. If you're new here, hello, my name is Rachel and I'm on a debt journey to get out from underneath an overwhelming amount of student loans. And I'm sharing that journey just because I wanna be a little part of the voice that says you're not alone in your journey and your student loans do not have to be a life sentence. In fact, I'm gonna be sharing my top three tips that have helped me survive and even put a little dent in my student loan progress. But before we get to the tips, let's first outline how we got here. Now this may age me a bit, but we're taking it all the way back to the spring of 2008 when I graduated from undergrad. I had $25,000 in student loans, but I also had $14,000 of credit card debt. That fall, I got a job making around $60,000 a year, and I was able to pay off all of that credit card debt by putting myself on a debt relief program. And in that time, I also managed to put a small dent in my student loans. In the fall of 2010, I decided to go to grad school because I thought that would be the best way to try to get a better job. And of course, I picked a private grad school based on the false promise of an 18 month master's program, as well as a very flashy welcome brochure. In the spring of 2015, I finally graduated much longer than 18 months later with a total of $211,584.67 in student loans, a used car loan, and revolving credit card debt for a grand total of $231,678.64 in debt. That is peak awesomeness. And then that fall, the better job that I got was working for the state of Florida for $32,000 a year. So yes, I 10X'd my debt and halved my salary. I'm gonna let that sink in because I did say that correctly. I 10X'd my debt and halved my salary. And then 2016 was just not a fun year for me. It was the epitome of living paycheck to paycheck. I was doing the swipe and pray every time I went to the grocery store and I was sharing a studio apartment in a less than safe area of the city with my boyfriend at the time. I ended the year with $225,123.98 of debt, $6,554 paid off, and that was all towards my credit cards and the normal monthly payment on my used car loan. Meanwhile, my student loans just continued to climb. In 2017, I had the same job, and in August, I finally got a raise to a whopping $36,000 a year. I ended that year with $224,000. $204.56 in debt. For those curious about the math, that's $919.42 paid off that year, despite having paid just under $13,000 towards my debt. Year after year, compound interest just working against you. I also realized that public service loan forgiveness plan was just not gonna be enough for me, so I decided to make a change. In February of 2018, I got the job that I currently have now, and I was so broke, I had to borrow $3,000 from my brother to cover the security deposit and first month's rent just so I could move here. Throughout 2018, I paid off all of my credit card debt, I paid off four private student loans that had horrible interest rates, and I paid off about half of that used car loan that I had left. I ended the year with $216,881.09 of debt, of which $211,966.84 was student loans. In 2019, I paid off that used car loan and then I ended the year with 
$356.44 in student loans. So things were finally getting paid down and that's just because my monthly payments were much higher since my salary was much higher than previous years. However, in late December, I actually bought a new car because that used car that I had just paid off no longer passed inspection. In 2020, I had paid off that new car by summertime and I actually had an emergency fund for the first time in my life, thank you to the student loan forbearance. And then I ended the year with $185,900.22 in student loan debt. In 2021, I was able to save $30,000 to put towards my student loan debt. And I also bought my first rental property. In December, I got overzealous about the impending end of the student loan forbearance. So I actually put $25,200 of that $30,000 I had saved towards my student loans. So I ended the year with $160,700.22 in student loan debt. And then they extended the forbearance again and again. And here we are in 2022. I am working on saving or paying down another $30,000 towards my student loans, as well as rebuilding my emergency fund since my rental property ate all of that last year. But on a happy note, I'm now making rental income that I'll be saving every penny of for a down payment on my next property. Now, while I still currently have a mountain of student loan debt, I am way more calm and at peace with my financial situation. And that's not just because I got incredibly lucky to have this high paying, soul sucking job, which by the way, I did not even need a graduate degree to get. But there's also a few key things I've done to help myself along the way that I probably would have needed to do anyway, even if I hadn't been able to steadily increase my income over the last four years. I think going through those years of panic and scraping by really helped me with this first and what I think is the most critical tip, and that's continuing to live as if I were still making $36,000 a year. I did not inflate my lifestyle to the max of my new income, and I have not done so, even as I've gotten raises over these last four years. Avoiding lifestyle creep has been hugely impactful for me. In fact, I have downsized my living expenses since I moved here in 2018. I started in a house, then I moved to a one-bedroom apartment, and then a studio apartment. I've gotten a little more expensive with this one bedroom apartment I'm currently in now, but I only did that after I eliminated all of my high interest debts and got well established in my savings and investing routine. The two biggest things you can do to increase your disposable income that you can have to put towards debt every month is increase your income and decrease your expenses. Not everyone has the ability to increase their income, so maybe decreasing your expenses is gonna be the bigger thing for you to focus on. And I know that takes work and discipline to slowly incorporate better financial habits into your daily life. And speaking of those habits, jumping on the Transfer Tuesday bandwagon has been incredibly helpful to build the weekly habit of actually taking steps towards my financial goals instead of just haphazardly trying to squirrel some money away whenever I thought I might have a little bit of extra, which really just makes the whole process of saving or investing a lot less daunting. Another key thing that helped me a ton was increasing my financial literacy. And the major player in that was this book right here. This is I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sadie. And this book has been immensely helpful. When I did start to have extra money, I had no idea what to do with it. And I didn't really know what would be the most financially be beneficial thing to do. Because of course, you know, your parents are telling you to invest, but every fiber of my being wanted to hoard every penny I made just from all those years of being so broke. And yet I also wanted my debt to be gone. So I didn't know what were the logical ways to kind of apply my money that would really benefit myself the most in the future. So one day I came across a review of this book on YouTube and I am so glad that I did. Um, Ramit's a big believer in getting your financial shit together, of course, but then also spending guilt-free on a certain amount of your discretionary income every month. Whether that's tiny or big, it doesn't matter. It's, it's whatever you deem important for yourself and you can spend it without guilt. Like I really like Dave Ramsey, I love his principles. I use the debt snowball and then the debt avalanche to attack my student loans thus far. But his whole philosophy on the $5 a day latte bullshit is just crazy. 
if you bought yourself a latte every single day of the year for five bucks, that's only $1,800 and that's just not really a financial big win, which is part of why I love this book because he helps you focus on what is going to be the most impactful big financial win for you based on your circumstances. And he also comes up with a six week game plan of how to get you set, get yourself set up. It's really um, driven more at someone with like their first professional job. They finally have a 401k option or they never took advantage of one before. And he just really outlines all the steps that um, are gonna get you to where you need to be. So essentially it's a six week program on how to get your finances organized, which that's what I needed. I really wish I had stumbled across this book years earlier, but unfortunately I didn't and that's okay. It came into my life exactly when I needed it to be there and I, I've i even bought this book for my friends just because it's so impactful and I just swear by it so much. I have it linked below every single video for a reason. That being said, I know I've been incredibly privileged to have the job that I have right now to help pull me out of this shit financial situation that I've gotten myself in and I'm never naive to that privilege but I don't want you to think that your situation is hopeless even if you can't land yourself a high paying job right now but also keep in mind that the job market's pretty hot right now there's a lot of high paying jobs out there which is fantastic we need them let's be honest <laughs> Consistency is still the biggest thing that will move the needle for you and you just can't ever lose sight of the bigger picture and why you want to be out of this shitty financial situation and into a better one. I really love how social media is reflecting a movement of normalizing, talking about money and finances and making the topic less taboo because having a better financial knowledge would have undoubtedly saved myself and probably a lot of you from making such devastating financial choices when we were younger even though society was saying that it was okay, it was the safe and expected path. So if by sharing my story, I can help even one person make a more informed financial decision and save themselves years of stress and anxiety, I will air my dirty laundry all day long. And I plan to continue to share my story until I get out from underneath this shit heap situation and can give my horrible job the middle finger. If my story resonates with you at all or you wanna follow along, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Or if you're curious about when and how I plan to give this job the middle finger, you can check out this video right here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.